Good morning, everyone. Yeah. May I request everybody to please stand up. Let us greet one another before we start. First Peter 1, 3 to 5, it says that what a God we have and how fortunate we are to have him, this father of our master Jesus. Because Jesus was raised from the dead, we've been given a brand new life and have everything to live for, including a future in heaven, and the future starts now. God is keeping careful watch over us in the future. The day is coming when you'll have it all, life healed and whole. So today we are celebrating the goodness of God. So let us proclaim that our Redeemer lives. And we, let's all thank Him for all He has done for us.
just continue to be in the presence of our Lord. Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, for dying on the cross for us. Thank you, Lord Jesus.
to the Lamb. Thank you, Father God, for the finished work on the cross, oh Lord Jesus. We bow down before you, Lord God, and give you our highest praise, Lord Jesus. <laughs>
you may all be seated and let's continue to linger in the presence of the Lord. Heavenly Father, indeed you are our God, our Holy Redeemer. You are majestic, you are marvelous, you are magnificent. You are omniscient and you are all-powerful. Lord, there is definitely nothing we can hide from you, for you know our thoughts, you know every word that we're about to say, and you know what's deep inside our hearts, Lord. And with this, Lord, we confess all our sins to you, and we humbly ask for forgiveness for any unrighteousness that we have done, Lord. Lord, we praise you for the life that we live. We praise you, Lord, for the gift of family, the gift of friendship, the gift of worshiping you in this place. Thank you so much, Lord, for giving us this opportunity once again to linger in your presence, to marvel in your works, and to bless your name. Heavenly Father, we praise you for the week that was. Thank you so much, Lord, for the Operation Jabez. Thank you, Lord, for your volunteers that you have sent out to preach the gospel to the lost and to our brothers who are in need of you, Lord. Thank you so much, Lord, for giving them the strength and for protecting them as they go out and share the gospel. Lord, thank you so much for the time that we were able to reflect and to to really understand what it what it meant to be saved. We praise you, Lord, for that. And we praise you, Lord, for that gift of salvation. For today we commemorate your that you have been risen, that you are alive, that our Redeemer lives. And as we celebrate today, Lord, we reflect on that wonderful gift of salvation. We thank you, Lord, that it's not through our good works that we have been saved, but it's only through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. That it's only through the blood of the Lamb that the sin of the world has been paid. Heavenly Father, we pray for our country. We pray, Lord, for our president down to our lowest barangay officials, Lord. We pray for a stable economy. We pray for more jobs and more opportunities for people, especially for those who are looking for jobs to provide for their families. Heavenly Father, we pray for your local church, GCF Santa Rosa. We pray, Lord, for our pastors, our leaders, our ministry heads. Lord, we pray that you bless our programs. You bless all our attendees. May we all remember that our mission is to know you and to make you known. And it's only through enriching our spiritual lives that we would be able to share you to other people. May we continue to grow spiritual, in spiritual maturity. And may we continue to learn more about you and to know you even deeper, Lord. Lord, we pray for our pastor who will preach your word today. We pray, Lord, that you give him the wisdom. Anoint him, Lord. Give him the right words to say and to speak boldly the truth in your word. And Lord, we pray for each and everyone who will listen to your word. We pray, Lord, that each and everyone would have a receptive heart to accept whatever corrections or whatever rebuke that you want us to learn today, Lord. Heavenly Father, we also pray for this coming Saturday for Mago or Men After God's Own Heart Fellowship, Lord. We pray that every fathers or every man of this church would have the would be encouraged to join us and to have fellowship as iron sharpens iron, Lord. May we continue to be encouragement to each other as we lead our household in worshiping you and in keeping the truth in our lives, Lord. Heavenly Father, we offer this moment of silence as we 
come before you for each and every petition that we have. We know, Lord, that you are our great provider, our great healer, and you, you will provide for our needs as you have promised in your word. Heavenly Father, we bring back all glory to you. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Good day everyone. Hello po, magandang uh, umaga po mga kapatid. And good afternoon or good morning. Hindi ko alam kung umaga pa ba o tanghali. Magandang tanghali po sa ating lahat. It is so good to see you ngayong araw po ng linggo. Kumusta po ang inyong uh, nakalipas na linggo? How was it? How was your vacation mga kapatid? Did you enjoy your vacation? Or your family gatherings? No? I hope that you had a meaningful reflection uh, during this uh, Holy Week. We praise the Lord ano, dito po sa ating church because uh, this past week uh, we were able to conduct yung OJ Santa Rosa and purin po ang Panginoon, we were able to send uh, 70 people into three teams na nag-reach out sa ating pong community uh, itong nakalipas na tatlong araw and many souls heard the gospel uh, dito po sa Tagapo, Makabling, maging sa kanluran, no? dito pong mga barangay natin na nakapalibot sa atin. And of course, there, there are also people or brothers and sisters who came to um, Santa Rosa, uh, Calamba, Laguna, to uh, uh, share the gospel. And nakakatawa mga kapatid, may bunga na kagad. No? Kanina umaga, there were attendees uh, who were product nung, ano, nung ating house-to-house evangelism. So, puri po ang Panginoon. Uh, I am really overwhelmed dun sa kagalakan. Alam ko, mag, na, ma, masaya po kayong lahat. No? Lahat tayo nagre-rejoice every time na may mga tao na nakakarinig ng mabuting balita at kumikilala sa ating pong Panginoon. So we praise God because we know, hindi lang ito gawain ng ilang tao, but this is uh, the whole church. Uh, thank you for your support and prayer. Kaya po naging matagumpay po ang ating OJ uh, this year. And this is the first time na ganito kadami pa yung delegation natin. Uh, by the way, uh, there were, I think, 16 uh, young people from uh, Kamuning uh, Bible Christian Fellowship uh, who joined us uh, last time. So, uh, salamat po sa Panginoon doon sa gawain po na ito. And we're looking forward for more, of, uh, more events like this. Uh, and not just annually, but we hope na mas maging madalas po ito, ano? And we want to invite you to take part of these uh, activities kasi talagang uh, panahon na ngayon na uh, mag-harvest. Even Jesus, 
give us the challenge no, na, to continue uh, to pray to the God of the harvest to send laborers because the harvest is plenty but the workers are few. Yan yung napatunayan po namin. I was actually reluctant nung, uh, nag, before we uh, went to house to house. Medyo reluctant ako. Sabi ko, ano kaya? Irerejig ako ng mga tao na to. I was thinking na baka hindi na ako makalabas ng buhay. Dito sa, may mga places na nakakatakot kami yung binisita. Na hindi ko siya dinadaanan. No? Baka ako ay, eh, alam mo yun, <laughs> paglabas ko ay, eh, hindi na ako makalabas. But uh, praise the Lord. Uh, yung mga prejudice na yun, tinanggal ng Lord. Kasi nakita ko yung mga tao. How they responded to the message of the gospel. And so, na-confirm ko talaga yung sinabi ni Jesus. that the harvest is plentiful. Ang daming mga tao na talagang ready na for harvest. They, they are ready to hear the message of the gospel. And the challenge is for God's people to go out and share to them the good news that Jesus Christ came to save us from sin and death. So po rin po ang Panginoon, uh, mamaya after our message, we'll be uh, sharing some video clips para makita niyo po what took place uh, during the Operation Jabez uh, this uh, Holy Week. And uh, ngayon po, uh, ngayong araw po na ito, this is a very special day because we are celebrating the most important event in the history of the world. I'm not actually exaggerating because uh, what I said was true. Totoo po yan. No? Because 2,000 years ago, ang ating Lord Jesus Christ He conquered death. And He was victorious. He rose from the dead. And because of that, nagkaroon po yan ng malaking implication sa ating lahat. Dahil sa si Jesus, ang ating Panginoon ay nabuhay na muli, ibig sabihin po ay yung ating pananampalataya ay hindi mawawala ng kabuluhan. No? If you will read 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the Apostle Paul gave his argument. No? Sabi niya, if Christ did not rise from the dead, then our faith is futile. Walang kabuluhan daw ang ating pananampalataya kung hindi nabuhay na muli ang ating Panginoong Jesus. And that is true. Totoo naman. No? Kung hindi nabuhay na muli si Jesus, then there is no basis, there is no reason for us to believe in Him who is dead, who is buried. No? But because He is alive, uh, merong pong batayan ng ating pananampalataya. If Christ, sabi pa ni Paul, no? if Christ did not live, then all his claims, lahat ng mga uh, sinabi ni Jesus, binanggit niya patungkol sa kanyang sarili, will, were not true. Siguro yung mga sinabi ng mga tao sa kanya that he is delusional or he is lunatic, lunatic ay totoo kung hindi po siya nabuhay na muli. But good thing, ang ating pong Panginoong Jesus ay nabuhay na muli and that gives weight and basis sa ating lahat. para mamuhay ng merong matibay na pag-asa sa panahon natin ngayon ano, at sa mga panahon pang darating. And so, I want us to uh, have that kind of mentality sa ating pagharap ngayong araw na ito, sa ating uh, Easter Sunday or Resurrection Sunday. Mas gusto kong tawagin yung Resurrection Sunday kasi yung iba, may ibang idea pagdating sa Easter Sunday. Ano, ang naiisip natin ay yung mga itlog. Easter Sunday, at saka yung mga bunny, ano? Mga bunny, di ba? So pag Easter, parang, I minsan mean, research ako sa Google, Easter Sunday, yun ang lalabas, no? mga itlog, bunny. So it has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. And you, know, you know what? Our society is trying to diminish the importance of the resurrection event. But you know what? Those who believe in the resurrection, hindi po tayo mananahimik. Hindi tayo titigil hanggang lahat ng tao would come to know that Jesus is Lord. Jesus is alive. Jesus is risen from the dead. He is victorious over death. At tayo, ng mga sumasampalataya sa Kanya, ay merong totoo at matibay na pag-asa. So purihin po ang Panginoon uh, as we uh, continue with our message this morning. Ang title po natin ay The Empty Tomb. So uh, we will look into the passage uh, from scriptures uh, patungkol dun sa uh, narrative about Jesus' resurrection. Ay po, what I like about, about Luke chapter 24 is it gives us uh, parang an exciting 
twist. In fact, this, I call this the greatest twist. Kasi yung chapter 23, kung natapos po yung chapter 23, hanggang dun lang, alam nyo po, napaka-hopeless po natin. Kasi ang, ang ending po nun, si Jesus, nilagay siya dun sa loob ng grave or ng uh, tomb. And then, umalis po yung mga tao, iniwan siya, kasi patay na siya, at siya ay nakalibing na dun. And they, uh, they uh, had to rest because it's Sabbath, Sabbath day or Black Saturday. It's going to be ano, Sabbath day na. So, medyo nakakalungkot if you will just read chapter 23, you, you end yung chapter 23 without chapter 24. But chapter 24 gives us an exciting twist. Alam mo yun, yung, yung parang Miss Universe na talo na eh, no? 2015, alala nyo 2015, si Pia. Hindi na siya tinawag eh. Alam, alam natin, tayo lahat mga Pilipino, alam natin talo na eh, no? Bilang may ano, merong twist, no? Victorious pala, no? Parang gano'n yung nangyari kay Jesus. Akala ng mga tao, akala ng mga disciples, defeated na, wala na talaga. Hopeless. But because of the resurrection of Jesus, everything changed, no? That's what we're going to uh, look uh, into the passage uh, this morning. Luke chapter 24, verses 1 to 12. Pwede ba natin basahin po itong teksto, ano? Sige po, please uh, join me in reading the text. If you have your Bibles, pwede pong pakibuksan po yan sa chapter 24. At kung nasa chapter 24 na po kayo, what I want us to do is to go a little further, pabalik dun sa chapter 23 verse 44. Para makita natin kung paano nagkaroon ng twist na dito sa story or narrative about Jesus' resurrection. Sige po, kung nakita niyo na po, uh, please stand up uh, to give reverence to the Word of God. <clears throat> Luke chapter 23, verse 44. It was now the sixth hour, and there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour, while the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, calling out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. Now when the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God, saying, Certainly this man was innocent. And all the crowds that had assembled for this spectacle, when they saw what had taken place, returned home beating their breast, and all his acquaintances and the women who had followed him from Galilee stood at a distance watching these things. Now there was a man named Joseph from the Jew Jewish town of Arimathea. He was a member of the council, a good and righteous man, and he was looking for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down, wrapped it in a linen shroud, and laid him in a tomb cut in stone where no one had ever yet been laid. It was the day of preparation, and the Sabbath was beginning. The women who had come home with him from Galilee followed and saw the tomb and how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath day, uh, they rested according to the commandment. So that's how the chapter 23 ended. Medyo malungkot po. It's a very sad day. But verse, uh, chapter 24, verse 1, let's proceed po. It's uh, uh, Resurrection Sunday. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. And they found... The stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living from the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man 
must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and on the third day rise. And they remember these words, and returning from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and the, the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter rose and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the leaning cloths by themselves, and he went home marveling at what had happened. Praise be to God for the reading of his word. You may now take your seats. This is God's word. Uh, we, we heard the word of God this morning. And uh, it actually tells us of the story about the resurrection of Jesus. Now, let me just give to you the outline of our message this morning. So, parang di po tayo masyadong mapalayo. Ano? So, the first thing that we are going to talk about is what was the disciples' re initial reaction? Did they believe at first or did they doubt? Huh? So, hindi agad po sila naniwala. But eventually, uh, their perspective changed. So, that's what we're going to look at on the second part. How did their perspective change? What did Jesus do to change their perspective? And then number three, how should we respond to Jesus' resurrection? Paano naman natin, uh, so what, no? paano natin ipapamuhay ang katotohanan na si Jesus ay nabuhay na muli? Let's uh, go back sa scene, uh, ito sa kung saan nagpunta po yung mga Uh, itong mga tao na ito, dun sa tomb, sabi sa verse 1 to 2 ng chapter 24, but on the first day of the week, that's Sunday, at early dawn, madaling araw, kaya po yung iba, nag, uh, kayo po ba nag, uh, pagka Resurrection Sunday, dati, may mga, uh, ano tayo dito? Madaling araw na service, no? Yo yon sunrise service, no? Hindi tayo makapag-sunrise service ito kasi sarado ang mall po ng ano eh. Kaya hopefully, uh, in the coming years, no? possible. No? So take, it was early dawn, they went to the tomb taking the spices they had prepared. Now, I want to ask you, who is Luke referring to when he mentioned the word they? Sino po yun? Who are these people? Sabi dito, they were taking the spices that they had prepared and they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Medyo kagulat-gulat po ito kasi mabigat po yung stone po na yun. And it was rolled, rolled away from the tomb. Sino po ito mga kapatid? These are the women. The women that was mentioned in the previous chapter. They were present during the burial sa chapter 23 verses 55 to 56. And let's read that. Sabi dyan, the women who had come with him from Galilee followed and saw the tomb and how his body was laid. Kitang-kita po nito mga babae na ito kung paano po inilibing si Jesus or inihiga si Jesus doon sa loob ng, ng tomb. Then they returned and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath day, or Sabbath, they rested according to the commandment. So hindi pa, na, hindi pa nila nadala yung spices. Pwede yung para saan po yung spices na yan? Usually, they, it's for ointment. Pinapahid po nila to sa mga... Uh, corpse or dead bodies, no? Itong mga ointments po na ito. So, they came there, uh, nung time na yon, nilibing si Jesus doon sa grave. So, they were present during the burial. And this is also interesting. If we look back a little further in the previous verses, they were also present there in the death scene of Jesus. Sabi po sa verses 46 to 49, Then Jesus, calling out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. Nung time po na to, totoo pong namatay si Jesus. Nalagutan po siya ng hininga after he said, he spoke these words. And all his acquaintances and the women who had followed him from Galilee stood at the distance watching these things. Now, just uh, reading this passage, it gives to us an idea that these women who visited Jesus' tomb on Sunday, early Sunday morning, these were the women who were there in the death scene 
and in the burial scene of Jesus. Nakita nila, nasaksihan nila, namatay si Jesus, inilibing si Jesus, at nakita rin nila si Jesus nung siya po ay muling nabuhay. This is quite interesting, mga kapatid, that of all people na pwedeng maka-experience, na masaksihan nila as eyewitnesses, yung mga events kay Jesus, the most important events of Jesus, yung kanyang kamatayan, paglilibing sa kanya, at muli pagkabuhay, it is very interesting that he chose these women to be with him. No? I do not know the reason why they were there, but of course, they loved Jesus, they supported Jesus, and they were willing to risk their life for Jesus. Kasi nung time na yan, yung kanyang mga ibang alagad, they ran away. Sabi nga, ang, ang, ang pastol ay huhulihin or dadakipin at ang mga tupa ay mga ngalap. Nung time na yan, si Jesus, nung siya po ay dinakip, ang kanyang mga alagad ay nagsialisan because of their fear na baka sila rin ay dakipin. No? But these women stood with Jesus. And you know what, mga kapatid, something interesting about the custom of the Jewish people during that time, alam niyo po na ang mga women, medyo mababa po ang kanilang antas sa lipunan, na they were not uh, given the permission or the right to testify in any court, any ano mang paglilitis. No? Hindi po sila binibigyan ng pagkakataon na mag, ano, mag, uh, mag, maging witness. No? But it's interesting, Jesus chose these women to, to witness all of these events. No? And now as we uh, look dito po sa verse 2, so they went to the tomb and, and the, the stone was rolled away from the tomb. Sabi sa verse 3 to 4, when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. They know that Jesus is dead. They have witnessed it. I'm sure, mga kapatid, I'm sure, tiniyak nila kung buhay pa si Jesus or patay na at napatunay nilang patay na si Jesus because they were there dun sa burial ni Jesus. So, they, would, or they were not thinking na tumayo si Jesus nung time na yun. The only possible uh, thing na nasa isip nila ay may kumuha dun sa bangkay ni Jesus. But where, it, where, where, where was it? Nasaan yung katawan ng ating Panginoon? But while they were perplexed about this, look at the ex, yung pong uh, kanilang emotions po dito. No? They were perplexed. Sila ay nagtataka, hindi nila mawari kung ano bang nangyayari. No? Di ba ganyan yung, parang, yung, yung emotion of perplex? They, they are, hindi nila alam kung anong, anong nangy, what, what's going on. No? And behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. May dalawang lalaki na nakatayo doon sa loob ng tomb na nagliliwanag ang kanilang mga kasuotan. So kung kayo po nakakita ng ganyan mga tao na nagliliwanag yung kasuotan, ano pang maramdaman nyo? Siguro itatanong nyo kung saan nabibili ang, <laughs> ang kanilang dazzling apparel. Now, the reason why the apparel was dazzling is because they were, according to other gospel narratives, they are, these are angels, tama ba? Mga anghel na naandoon para kausapin sina yung mga kababaihan. No? So what happened next, verse 5 to 6, as they were frightened, tatakot sila dun sa mga nagniningning na kasuotan, kala nila multo, no? and they bowed their faces to the ground. The men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. And you po, as I read this, I got a clue that this is perhaps the, the main message of the chapter. They were thinking that Jesus is dead, but he is actually not dead. He has risen from the dead. Kaya ang tanong sa kanila, bakit nyo hinahanap ang buhay sa mga patay? Why are you thinking that he is still dead when he had already told you before that he would rise again? Sabi niya dyan sa verse 6 to 7, sabi ng dalawang lalaki, Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee. Naalala nyo? While you were in Galilee and even while you were walking, going to Jerusalem, didn't you remember that he said to you several times, that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise. Do you ba naalala yan? Na yan ay sinabi sa inyo. Ano? So, remember that. Sabi nung, nung, ano, nung uh, mga angel. And what did they say? 
Uh, well, how did they respond? Sa verse 8 to 9. And they remembered his words. Bilang na-recall nila. Ano? Oo nga, no? Sinabi yun ng Panginoong Yesus na siya ay mamamatay at siya ay muli mabubuhay sa ikatlong araw. Buti pa tong angel alam. Ako, tayo, tayo narinig natin to noon, pero bakit hindi, parang hindi tayo masyadong, di ba? Parang nalimutan natin. No? So they were reminded. And from the tomb, they, they told all these things. Sabi dito, they returned. No? From the tomb, bumalik po sila dun sa lugar. Uh, they told all these things to the eleven. Sino po yung eleven po na yan? Yung mga apostles. Bakit po eleven? Oh, naghudas po kasi yung isa. Ano? Kaya eleven na lang. So they went there to the eleven apostles. Now, tinan niyo po, in-identify dito sino yung mga women. No? Now, it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. So may nagbanggit do sa mga apostol, nakit ang Panginoong Jesus ay nabuhay na muli. May mga anghel na nagpakita sa amin at pinaalala nila sa amin ang sinabi ni Jesus, etc. So they were telling the, them what happened. But these words, look at this. How did the apostles respond to the news? But these words seemed to them an idle tale and they did not believe them. Nakakalungkot, no? Kahit ilang beses sinabi ni Jesus, eh para sa kanila, hindi sila makapaniwala na totoo po na nabuhay na muli ang ating pong Panginoong Jesus. If you have seen a person dead sa iyong harapan, as in, nakita mo talaga na matay siya, at totoong, totoong na matay, I, I, I have witness, meron po akong isang, yung best friend ko na namatay sa harapan ko. I brought him to the hospital and he was dead on arrival. And I was there alone in the hospital habang itinutulak siya doon sa, alam mo yung stretcher. Sabi, dadali na po ito sa morgue. Iyak ako doon mag-isa. Sabi, di ako makapaniwala na he's dead. And I was trying to wake him up. Pero, I could not do anything to give life to this lifeless body. Di ba? And so, if, if you have been with a person who died sa harapan mo, you will realize how impossible it is for, for a person to, to, to recover or to, to have life once again. No? That's siya na matay. So they did not believe no? do sa sinabi ng mga kababaihan. But Peter rose and ran to the tomb. Ano ginawa ni Pedro? Tumakbo siya doon sa libingan and stooping and looking in he saw the linen cloths by themselves and he went home marveling at what had happened umuwi po siya nakita niya kasi wala na rin doon yung katawan now in order for us to understand the whole uh, chapter chapter 24 let me just give a summary of chapter 24 with this table it actually has uh, a pattern of uh, ito meron pong pattern po yung chapter 24 first it tells us about a resurrection event and the reaction of the people, and the rebuke that they received from the Lord, or from a messenger of the Lord. Yung una, yung women came to the tomb, they did not see the body of Jesus. Anong reaction nila? They were perplexed and terrified. Pero ang rebuke, ano pong rebuke sa kanila? Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, he has risen from the dead. Pangalawa po, yung women po, they came to the apostles about Jesus' resurrection. Naniwala po ba mga apostol? They did not believe. May rebuke po? Wala pa. Pero sooner meron po. Number three, Peter ran to the tomb and saw the linen cloths. Anong reaction niya? He went home marveling and then there was no rebuke. Number four, Jesus walked with two disciples going to Emmaus. Siguro nabasa niyo na po itong magandang story na to, no? na dalawang alagad, naglalakad sila papunta sa Emmaus. So Jesus, he walked with them. No? But what was their reaction? Were they happy? Oh, Lord Jesus, ikaw pala yan. They did not recognize Jesus. And sabi sa, anong rebuke dito ni Jesus? Oh, foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe, all the prophets have spoken. So beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Another resurrection event, Jesus appeared to the apostles. Ito na po. Dito na lahat yung mga apostol niya, pati yung mga babae. He came there at sabi niya, peace be with you. Jesus appeared to the apostles. Anong reaction nila? They were startled and frightened. 
and thought that they saw a spirit. So uh, even until this time, may mga duda pa sila sa resurrection of Jesus. And what was the review of Jesus? Why are you troubled and why, why do doubts arise in your hearts? So pinakita niya po yung kanyang uh, mga sugat. No? See, na ako po, ay, hindi ako multo. Ano, hawakan niyo para malaman niyo kung multo ako. So nahawakan po nila. And sa number six, Jesus showed them his hands and his feet. What was their reaction? They still disbelieve and were marveling. And so what did Jesus say to them? These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Now, do you notice what is going on here in chapter 24 of the Gospel of Luke? Ano po napansin niyo po? The disciples were portrayed, very honest yung pagpo-portray sa kanila, ano? yung pagkakwento patungkol sa kanila. If you are an apostle, would you be offended? No? By a, si, si Luke po ang sumulat nito. Eh, no? Pwede siguro lang sabihin, Luke, bakit mo naman sinama pa yan sa writing? Pakakahiya naman. Ha? Kami mga apostol, eh, nung una, dudang-duda do sa pagkabuhay na muli ng Panginoon. This is my question to you. Why did they include that in the gospel narrative? He included that because that is important. No? There is a lesson we can learn from that. And we can learn, we can, we can see from their experience that at first, they did not believe in the resurrection. At first, they have so many doubts about Jesus rising from the dead. They could not comprehend it. In fact, ang hirap talaga, ang hirap unawain ito, nung katotohanan ito, na ang isang taong namatay, mabubuhay na muli. They cannot comprehend it. And so, what is, the, what is the purpose of the author? Why he had to put it in the gospel narrative? He wants to emphasize here, mga kapatid, he wants to highlight the importance of believing in the resurrection of Jesus. Napakahalaga po na maniwala tayo, paniwalaan natin ang katotohanan sa, mabuting, ah, sa pagkabuhay na muli ng Panginoon. Now, as we continue, verse 44 to, uh, to succeeding verses, Then he opened the minds, uh, their minds to understand the scriptures. Ganda nito, no? Ang time na hindi na naiintindihan lahat. Jesus helped them understand the scriptures. Hindi ba yan ang ginagawa ng Panginoon? He is guiding us para maunawaan po natin. And he is our teacher. He is the one helping us understand no? yung katotohanan patungkol sa mabuting, o oh, patungkol sa Old Testament scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead. What is Jesus telling them, mga kapatid? Yung resurrection ko, do not be surprised. I have mentioned this several times to you. And the Old Testament scriptures testify about this event. This is not something that man created. No? Ito po ay katotohanan na pinlano po ng Diyos at Fulfill ng ating pong Panginoon. And so as we continue reading verse 47 to 48, this is now the implication of the resurrection of Jesus. And that repentance for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in His name to all nations. So ang balita, ang mensahe patungkol sa kapatawaran ay ipapangaral sa lahat ng tao, sa lahat ng tao sa buong mundo, all nations, beginning from Jerusalem, And he said, you are witnesses of these things. Kayo ang mga saksi ko. Kayo ang mga witnesses ko na siyang magbabahagi sa iba ng katotohanan ito. And what happened uh, next? Verse 50 to 51. So during this time, Jesus went up to heaven and he led them out uh, as far as Bethany. Medyo, medyo, medyo shortcut po yung story po dito ni, ano, ni, ni Luke. Ha? Kasi nung time po na yan, nung nabuhay na muli si Jesus, hindi agad siya umakit sa langit. According to Uh, other passages of scripture, it took almost 40 days pa before po siya umakit sa langit. Okay? Now, ito po, yung time na yun, umakit sa, sa, sa langit, sabi, and he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. Now, what happened to the apostles? And they worship him, and they returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and were continually in the temple blessing God. 
Now, you will continue reading uh, the book of Acts. By the way, ang Gospel of Luke at book of Acts are two volume books. Dalawang volume po yan na books. Magkasunod po yan. Same author, si Lucas. Ang sumulat po ng Luke and, and uh, ito pong uh, um, ano tayo ito? Acts, the book of Acts. So, makita natin kung paano nagbago po, mga kapatid. Because of the resurrection event, nagbago po ang perspective ng mga apostles. So, Jesus' resurrection has changed everything. Binago po ang buhay ng mga apostol. Binago ang perspective, ang life orientation, ang mission nila sa buhay. And until now, mga kapatid, the truth of the resurrection of Jesus still changes lives of so many people. And if you fully understand yung katotohanan na ito na si Jesus inabuhay na muli, it will affect how you will live. Kung ano yung, yung perspective mo sa buhay at ano yung mga bagay na mahalaga. And so nakita natin dito kung paano nagbago po, no? from fear to confidence, from hopelessness to rejoicing, di ba? They were in despair. Sila ay parang wala nang pag-asa but they were rejoicing. They became, uh, from mourning to, to praising, sila po ay nagpuri sa Panginoon. And from the dark tomb, kinan niya po yung, ano, yung uh, naging effect po ng resurrection. From the tar- dark tomb, Jesus is now glorious in heaven. He came up, He ascended to heaven. And so, what does it tell us, mga kapatid, na ang tomb, the, 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 the um, yung pong uh, empty tomb, it tells us a message, yung katotohanan, ha? na ang ating Panginoon Jesus ay nabuhay na muli at nagkaroon ng malaking pagbabago sa buhay ng mga taong nakasaksi po nito. Now the question is this, how should we respond to Christ's resurrection? Ngayon nakita natin no, na si Jesus ay nabuhay na muli. Ito po ang dapat natin maging response mga kapatid. We should not live in despair and hopelessness. Why? Because Jesus is alive. I don't know what's going on in your life. Perhaps you are disappointed with recent events sa iyong buhay or maybe you're feeling na you're grieving about something hindi, hindi maganda pangyari sa iyong buhay. Pero alam niyo po, po bilang mga Kristiyano, may isang bagay na hindi dapat mawala sa atin. At yun ay ang ating pag-asa. Ang pag-asa natin ay buhay kasi ang ating Panginoon ay buhay. Jesus is alive. And this is something, mga kapatid, that gives me hope sa aking personal no personal na buhay I have full confidence I have full hope that everything will be fine that my future is secured because the God that I have put my trust is alive and because he lives according to a song I can face tomorrow di ba sabi sa isang awitin meron tayong pag-asa kapatid tayo bilang mga Kristiyano hindi tayo dapat nawawala ng pag-asa Kasi ang Diyos natin ay buhay, hindi naman patay. No? Dahil siya ay buhay, yung ating sinasamba, pinananampalatayanan, ay huwag po tayo mawalan po ng pag-asa. He is victorious. Paano po siya nagtagumpay? He conquered death. All human beings, yan po, pag binasa natin ng history of men, laging ano yun, no? pinanganak tapos namatay, pinanganak namatay. Kahit pagpubunta ka po sa sementeryo, laging yan po ang mga nakasulat. Dalawa lang po ang isusulat sa ano natin. Sa mga puntod daw, no? Ano nakalagay? Name, tapos yung born, tapos died. Yun po, yun po ang realidad, mga kapatid. Lahat tayo mamatay. But Jesus, He died, but He rose again. So He conquered death. Our Lord Jesus Christ is not like other prophets or other people, influential people who live here on earth. He is different because He is victorious. He conquered death. And that's why ito po ang hamon ko sa ating lahat, mga kapatid. No? We need to stand firm in the truth of Christ's resurrection. And when I say stand firm, ito po yung dapat natin pangahawakan sa ating pong buhay. No? Paniwalaan natin na si Jesus po ay nabuhay na muli. Many people are, alam mo yun, they are trying to explain the resurrection in their own human language and they, say, they are saying, that is impossible. Paano mangyayari po yan? No? This is my question to you. May imposible po ba sa Panginoon? 
Is there anything impossible with God? No? If He gives life, kung siya'y nabibigay ng buhay, ang Diyos ang pinagmumuha ng buhay, then is it impossible for God to give life? No? Or to uh, to live again? No? So, makatotohanan po mga kapatid, ang pangako ng, ah, ang, ang mabuting, ah, ang uh, resurrection dahil ang ating pong Diyos ay makapangyarihan. That's the first. God is powerful and at the same time, God is truthful. The resurrection is an evidence that God fulfills what He has promised in the Old Testament. Sinabi na si Jesus, ang Mesiyas hindi mabubulok sa mga patay, that He would rise again on the third day. And so, because of the resurrection, because of this uh, uh, words from God, meron po tayong assurance because ang Lord po natin ay hindi nagsisinungaling. Totoo po, totoo po ang mga sinasabi ng ating pong Panginoon. And lastly, we need to share the message of God's forgiveness and salvation. Ito po ang ating mission, mga kapatid. It is apparent in the passage that the Apostle, uh, that, that Luke actually uh, wants to emphasize here that at first, mga, ang mga apostol, hindi po sila naniwala na si Jesus ay nabuhay na muli. But it changed, mga kapatid. And now, now, they are the ones testifying to all people that Jesus is alive. And so, it's, it's also the challenge sa ating lahat. This is the response natin. Tayo bilang mga tumanggap ng mabuting balita ng kaligtasan. Ano po ang hamon sa atin? Ibahagi sa iba ang mensahe ng kapatawaran at ng kaligtasan na mula sa ating Panginoong Yesus. Yan po ang implication na, mga kapatid. And that's why if you will read 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the Apostle Paul mentioned that if Christ did not resurrect according to Him, we are still in our sins. Kung hindi na buhay na muli si Jesus, tayo ay nasa mga kasalanan pa natin. But because Christ lived again, because Christ resurrected, tayo napawi po. Totoong ang lahat ng ating mga kasalanan has been atoned for doon sa cruz. Sabi nga sa isang, may isang expression ako na basa recently. The Friday is good. Di ba Good Friday? Because of what happened on Sunday. On Sunday, Jesus rose from the dead. And that's the glorious day, mga kapatid. That's what we are celebrating ngayon pong araw po na ito. And this is my challenge to all of us. We should not give up do sa ating pangangaral, pagbabahagi ng mabuting balita. Sa lahat ng mga bansa, iyan po ang nais ng Panginoon. And that's why recently, I am re- really rejoicing you know, for the recent event natin po dito sa OJ. And we are excited na tayo ay magpatuloy po dito sa gawain nito. No, hanggang dumating ang ating pong Panginoon, hindi po tayo dapat tumigil na ipangaral, ipahayag, ibahagi sa ibang tao ang mensahe po ng mabuting balita. So Jesus is alive. May the empty tomb serve as a reminder to every believer that death has been conquered and eternal life is possible, again, is possible in Christ Jesus our Lord, the risen Lord. Meron po tayong kapatawaran. Meron po tayong buhay na wala hanggan. Meron pag-asa na tayo po ay hahanguin mula po sa kamatayan. And that's the message of the empty tomb. Ngayong oras po na ito, I want to challenge you to recommit your life to the Lord. To thank Him for what He has done for you. And if there were doubts sa iyong puso patungkol sa Panginoon sa lahat, uh, sa katotohanan ng mabut ng uh, ng resurrection, my challenge to you is to talk to the Lord ngayong oras po na ito and ask for God's forgiveness sa ayat sa ating pong mga kasalanan. At katulad ng mga apostol, mga kapatid, they, they may be living in despair during, during the time, but because they believe in the resurrection, everything changed. And if you want to, have, if you want to experience that kind of change in your life and perspective, my challenge to you is to believe in the message of the resurrection and stand firm in the truth of Christ's resurrection. Tayo po'y manalayan. Panginoon, marami pong salamat sa iyo pong mga salita. 
We are in awe of your wonderful work, Panginoon. Una, Panginoon, yung iyong iniala, yung iyong buhay doon sa krus for the remission of sins. That we do not need to hurt ourselves. Hindi namin kailangang ipako ang aming sarili. Hindi namin kailangang parusahan ang aming sarili for the remission of our sins. But it is through the atoning sacrifice of Christ on the cross. We can be forgiven. And we have been forgiven because of our faith in Christ. Salamat po, Panginoon, sa magandang balita po na ito. And salamat din sa araw na ito, Resurrection Sunday, kung saan aming ipinagdiriwang ang pagkabuhay mo na muli, Panginoon. May this truth change our perspective and the way we live our lives today and tomorrow. Lord, continue, Lord, to uh, bless each one of us. Continue, Lord, to guide us as we uh, continue to follow you and to share you, your word and, go- and the gospel to all the people. Marami pong salamat, Panginoon, sa katotohanan po na ito. Ito po ang aming dalangin sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen, amen. Purihin po ang Panginoon. Ngayon po, tayo po ay magpapatuloy po sa ating pagsamba sa ating Panginoon. Tayo po ay magkakaloob po sa Kanyang gawain. Tayo po muli ay manalangin. Father God, thank you for all your blessings. The reason why we, we have all the resources is because you are our provider. And uh, we just want, Lord, to honor you with your resources. May you be glorified sa aming pong gawain na ito. Sa pangalan ni Jesus, Amen, amen. Purihin po ang Panginoon. Ngayon po ay araw po ng uh, last Sunday of the month of March. So, uh, during the last Sunday of the month, we are encouraging our members to give for our outreach ministries. So, we have mission offering. Pero hindi po ito sa pilitan, no? but if you want to take part of our uh, outreach ministries, so you may uh, want to uh, to give some offerings for our, for our uh, missions. Sige po, uh, tayo po ay uh, i-assist po na ating po mga usher. I am Bethel Fetus Flores and I am part of this OG. For me, I feel blessed I feel blessed and happy because I, I have an opportunity to be part of this OG and to share God's God's message. For me, it is a bless it is a blessing for me because I can share can share God's word to others. And I encourage you to, to join this kind of activity because for me it's a blessing and it is also a blessing for you. Thank you. Hello po, ako po si Emery Carsten S. De La Cruz. I'm ano 15 years old nag-aaral po sa CSA so ang highlights ko po sa Operation JBS is um, yung mga nasiran ko po uh, may nasiran po ako na, na mga bata sa basketball court po um, tatlo po sila binigyan ko po sila ng biscuit and natuwa po sila so ini-encourage ko naman po kayo na mag-join po kayo sa evangelistic katulad nitong Operation JBS ako nga pala po si Bernard po ano at uh, isa po ako sa naimbitahan po no maging part po ng OJ Operation na uh, Jabes po 
At uh, alam niyo po, napakaganda po no, nung mga nangyari po ngayon na kung saan nakaka-encourage po, na kung saan po uh, maging part and alam niyo, makapag-share po no, ng gospel na sa mga tao po, ikit sa lahat po sa mga uh, kababayan po natin at sa mga non-believers din po. At uh, alam niyo po, yung uh, isa po sa nakita ko po dito na marami pa po yung mga nangangailangan po no na makatanggap and to know more Jesus po no sa buhay po nila. Sobrang ano, sarap po sa piling na maging party po nito no na gamitin po tayo no na instrumento po ni, ni God no, na makapag-share po sa iba at uh, makita mo yung mga tao talaga no makita mo yung sincerity po nila natanggapin si Jesus as their personal savior. My name is Marga Manabat and I am uh, from JCF Santa Rosa. Yung nag-encourage po sa akin na sumali dito sa OJ. Um Una po talaga sa akin is yung na-curious po ako kung paano ko i kung paano ipahayag yung word of God, kung paano yung experience nila na kapag nag house to house, kung paano yung feeling kapag nag-nag-express ng share ng gospel sa ibang tao. And then kanina po yung experience ko noong una, syempre uh, nahihiya pa ako. Pero nung uh, nakita ko na po yung mga kasama ko sa grupo sa pag-iikot ay napahayag ko naman po ng maayos and sobrang happy ako kasi nakapag-share ako ng gospel sa tatlong mga younger kids sa akin and sobrang nakakatuwa din kasi natanggap na nila si Lord and gustong gusto pa nilang makilala si Lord. Ako po ay in-encourage ko po kayo lahat na uh, sa susunod na may mga ganitong events is sumali po kayo dahil um, nakakagaan po talaga sa damdamin ko and lalo na sobrang nakakatuwa kasi nakikilala na po nila masyado na ngayon si Lord. Uh, ako nga po pala si Ate Jean Di Pasupil. Uh, kaya po ako nag-join dito sa OJ. Actually, third year na po ito. Twice na ako nakajoin. Yung first year, nakajoin ako. It was an exciting uh, experience. Although the, the next year, hindi ako nakajoin for some personal reasons. Kaya ako nagjo-join dito kasi ito yung time na uh, masunod ko yung command ng Lord na mag-share ng gospel. So, uh, dati kasi napakamahiyain kong mag-share ng gospel. Pero, nung maintindihan ko yung mandate ng Lord sa atin, eto na po yun. And praise the Lord for that. Kaya yung iba po na hindi pa nakaka-join sa OJ, nako, sumali po kayo kasi ibang experience talaga. Kung makikita niyo po yung sa background, Ayan po yung mga batang na share natin ngayon. Nagmumove, ano po sila, nanonood ng Jesus film. Kaya yung pong hindi pa nakaka-experience, please, wag niyo pong ipag-ano, sayangin ang panahon na makapag-share ng gospel. Kasi ito po yung utos ng Lord kuman sa atin. Yun po. Hello, I'm Joseph Munoz and I'm 18 years old. Uh, I'm from KBCF or Kamuning Bibles Christian Fellowship. And... What inspired me to come here in the OJ is that I want to have a refresher kasi sobrang tagal ko na rin since last ako nag-share ng gospel. And first year ko rin to as an ano, participant sa OJ or Operation Jabez. And thankful ako na ang dami kong ano, na-experience and ang dami nag-inspire sa akin na mag-share talaga to share the gospel. And what I learned is that hindi ako dapat nag-realize sa pansarili ko lang. I should rely on God's Word and to the Holy Spirit. And word of encouragement guys, I urge you na sumali pa kayo sa mga susunod na OJs and mga evangelical na events na sa churches nyo. And I am thankful talaga na nakapunta ako dito. I, I am able to participate dito sa opportunity na ito and God bless you all. Hi, ako si Jenny and um, I am from KBCF. Urge ko yung inspiration ko is madami talagang mga tao na hindi talaga kilala si Christ. And madami din yung mga religions na um, iba-iba yung perspective. Pero we all know na lahat tayo, kahit iba ba yung religions natin, alam natin na iisa lang ang gusto niyong, ng Panginoon sa atin is mahal, mahal niya tayo. And sa akin, ang gusto ko lang may parating as an encouragement that let go and let God na lahat ng gagawin natin ay hindi para sa atin, kundi sa Panginoon. And sa church ng GCF and KBCF, sa iba pa, I encourage you to um, 
feel yung gawa ng Panginoon sa inyo, yung sa ministries and other, kahit hindi OJ, um, we, I can encourage you na mag-share pa din ng gospel. Yun lang. Thank you.
Panginoon ko, kabahagi po tayong lahat dito po sa pag-abot po sa mga kaluluwa po sa Santa Rosa at Calamba. So thank you po for supporting us in prayers, in monetary, and of course yung inyong presence po, ah, napakahalaga po. And we're looking forward for more events like this in the future, or sana hindi lang annually but uh, mas madalas pa na magawa natin to, no? So uh, let's continue to know Christ and make Him known. Ayan. So ngayon po, uh, let me just give some, uh, let me remind you of some important events or upcoming events po. Um, sa Sabado na po, ang Mago or Men's Fellowship, we would like to invite you all, 7 a.m. po ang Breakfast Fellowship. Dito po gaganapin sa ating church. So uh, kahit po yung mga younger po natin na men, pwede na po kayong sumali po dito. Ano? So wala po itong registration, walang registration fee, but uh, if you want to share something, pwede po kayong magdala ng meal uh, on uh, Saturday. So pwede po yung pagsalusaluhan for the, this is the first time again after ilang ano rin, medyo ma- mahabang panahon din na hindi nakapag-fellowship ang mga kalakihan. So praise God kasi binubuo muli ng Panginoon ang ito pong uh, mag-go-fellowship uh, po natin. And then sa next next Sunday, meron po ulit tayong Fundamentals of the Faith. This is the second session and pwede pa po kayong humabol para po ito sa lahat after second service po sa April 14. Meron po 100 peso, pesos registration, yan po ay para sa food po. So you can register now sa ating pong mga ushers po doon para po makapa, mailista po kayo sa food. Pero kung hindi nyo po kailangan ng food, pwede po kayo pumunta dito, wala pong bayad po yan. No? Yung pong food lang po yung meron pong uh, payment. Okay, so uh, ito po gusto natin i-announce sa inyo na this coming April will be celebrating our 18th anniversary. Ayan, so debut nagde-debu na ho ang church, no? Ayan, debutante na. Para naalala ko si ano nag-celebrate ng 18th birthday si uh, Julia, ano. So ibig sabihin kakap hindi <laughs> pa pinapanganak si Julian. Ah, oy, papang kakapanganak pa lang, no? No, nung na-establish po ang ating church. So we'd like to invite you po. Ang ating pong tema ay abound in love. Ayan, as early as now, uh, paki-block niyo na po ang inyong mga calendar. This will be on the last Sunday of April. I think that's April 28. 28 po ba? 28. Yan. So, uh, sana maka-join po kayo. Uh, ngayon po, gusto natin iwag ang mga ating mga first ti- first-timers. If you're here for the first time, pwede po ba kayong tumayo? Ayun, welcome po ate. Welcome po. Praise God. We are glad to have you here ngayong, pong hap- ngayong tanghali na ito. Praise be to God. Meron po tayong visitor center at the back. You may stay after the worship service uh, so that we can have some uh, conversation with you and coffee. And so, uh, stay po kayo mamaya after the service. Praise the Lord. Thank you po. Thank you. Si ate po. So, ngayon po, ate, tayo nga po ulit kayo. <laughs> Nakamayan ba kayo na yung mami Gina? Si, uh, si ate po. <laughs> Okay, sige. Akala ko din nakamayan. Welcome po kayo dito sa ating pong church and uh, we hope to see more new faces Ito po, dito po sa ating worship hall. Ayan, po rin po ang Panginoon. So, gusto lang din po natin i-greet ang ating mga birthday celebrants this week. Uh, Ate Loris Maiko Maranan, happy birthday po. Ayan. Sa April Fool's Day pala yan. Ano? April Fool's Day. Pero totoo po yan ang birthday niya. Hindi po Fool's Day yan. Birthday rin po ni Kuya MJ, ang isang mga awit natin na napakahusay. Parang may pakaway pa yan, no? <laughs> And then birthday din po ni Ate Flor Pancho. Si BJ, yan. Si BJ Rodriguez. Yan. So, happy birthday po. Dami pa si Kuya Mark, yan, no? Birthday din po ni Ate Ligaya. Sister Ligaya. Happy birthday po. Ligaya La Serna. Deacon Art Cruz March 6 ah, April April 6 na pala to and then si brother Nolito Liwag Ayan. happy birthday po sa inyo lahat okay so um, wala na yata announcement no sige let's let's all rise up tayo po tayong lahat and let's uh, end our time in prayer tayo po ay manalangin Panginoon marami pong salamat sa katotohanan na aming pinangahawakan, ikaw ay buhay, Panginoon. 
at ang aming pag-asa ay buhay. Patuloy, Lord, na uh, bigyan niyo kami ng encouragement, Lord, in this present life, that all will be well and our future is secured because our Lord is risen from the dead. Salamat po. May you bless each one of us as we part ways ngayong hapon na ito. May the Lord of... May, may, uh, may, the, may the love of the Lord Jesus, the, lo, the, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. Maraming salamat po and have a blessed week po. Uh, God bless po mga kapatid. Thank you, Pastor, for the wonderful message. And again, to remind everyone, how should we respond to the resurrection? Do not live in despair and hopelessness because Jesus is alive. He is victorious as he, and he conquered death. Stand firm on the truth of Christ's resurrection and share the message of God's forgiveness and salvation. Before we part ways, let us sing again, My Redeemer Lives. Thank you.